Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to the Jaded Stitches Show. I am just finishing off a bath poof, and this is what we're going to make today. Um, we put up a free pattern for the Silk of Vicuña members over on the members web page. So if you are a Silk or Vicuña member, that is your little um, freebie, your perk for uh, what was January. That went up last week. And um, if you're new to the Silk or Vicuña membership, we will make sure there's login information available for you after today's post. Um, there are notes on today's project in the description box down below. And if you are interested in the pattern, we have a pattern, a written pattern in our Etsy shop. It's in the bargain bin. It's on snail today as well. And it's got two different sizes of this little scrubby pattern in it. Um, this is such a fun pattern. It is a great way to practice double crochet. It is a great beginner project because you can screw up as much as you want and it'll still work. <laughs> um, so welcome, welcome. That's what we're up to today. Mr. and Stitches is in the house pushing buttons. Hello everyone. Welcome. I've got some water. I've got some yarn here. I'm so glad you could all make it. Um, and also I just want to say we're going to try a little experiment today. We recently found out that if people press the like button, the thumbs up button during a live stream, it apparently will help get pushed into people's notifications. So you know that whole thing where you don't hear your notifications or maybe um, you don't see something land in your, uh, your homepage or even sometimes your subscription feed? It might be because the things that are getting thumbed up will show up in your face before the things that aren't getting thumbed up as much. And if something is an actual live stream happening live and people are pressing the like button, it's more likely to show up in somebody's feed. So if there are people out there who really like to watch live crochet tutorials or just to sort of hang out with a really crafty bunch of people, they're more likely to find us if everybody hits the like button. So that's what we're going to try today. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. Thanks for picking up a pattern. Um, so that's our little experiment. So if everybody can um, just sort of remember to press the like button, the little thumbs up button, we'll see if that works. We're going to see if it, it helps our uh, concurrent viewership. That's sort of our little experiment today. So, um, all right, let's talk materials. Uh, today I'm using a five millimeter hook. This is also known as an H or an eight, but honestly, you can use whatever hook you're comfortable with. So if you've got a five and a half millimeter, or maybe you've got um, a four millimeter, something in that medium hook range, you can use whatever you want, um, as long as it's comfortable for you, because this is all about cramming in stitches. So whatever you're comfortable, uh, whatever hook you're comfortable with. Cotton. We're using 100% cotton yarn. This is the kind of cotton that you make like a dishcloth out of. So it's not the super nice um, mercerized stuff like the 24-7 cotton. This is like your yeah, your peaches and cream or your sugar and cream, your burnat, that that sort of nice hardworking, maybe the re-up by Lion Brand, your your dishcloth cotton. So size four, if you can only get your hands on size three, like the DK lightweight, that's fine. That works too. Um, and you can use, again, whatever hook you're comfortable with. A pair of scissors, you might find a yarn needle handy. Um, I should say a stitch marker and of course a yarn needle. And these are all the same. I've got... Um, four different size four medium weight cottons. You need around, I don't know, 55, 60 yards of yarn. If you're gonna make it a little bigger, maybe 75 to 80 yards of yarn. Um, like I said, there is really no way to screw this up. You can just keep accidentally shoving in more stitches anywhere you want, and it's just gonna make it more poofy. <laughs> so I've got, uh, I thought I would break into some of these new uh, pretty striped cakes today. I'm going to try and pick one. Maybe you guys can pick it for me. And I've also got this one, which I thought looked kind of um, like it could go with this whole sort of Valentine's theme because I was thinking, you know, make yourself a poof. It's a little self-love. Hi, Sherry. Thank you for the super chat. Sherry says, yes, let's cram stitches. <laughs> this is a stitch cramming project. So uh, just just remember to keep your wrist loose and relaxed because the, the tendency, at least for me anyways, to really start flying, I just made this before the stream. So you saw me kind of weaving in the end. I wanted to just time myself because I used that partly scrubby, partly regular cotton, um, which I find slows me down. This took me 25 minutes and this, this stuff really slows me down. So it is a fast project. It's great for practicing double crochet. Don't worry about screwing up. You really can't. Um, the more you cram in, the more of a poofy uh, poof you get. Uh, if you're gonna use 
the scrubby yarn. Let's say you've got that scrubby yarn that's all scrubby, uh, and you're the type that likes to pair it up with a with a regular cotton. Um, you're going to want to use obviously a bigger hook probably, and you might not be able to cram as many stitches again that's fine it'll also be a bigger poof so if you do that i'd love to see how that works out for you um, this right here is just a single strand of that alternating um, scrubby and regular yarn and i made one of these for the mister he likes it um, he said he wouldn't mind a bigger one and i made this one for me but now i want to make one using pretty striping yarn so before we get started mister and stitches can we run a poll right off the bat uh yeah i think so yeah? absolutely okay um you want to line it up um, yes so that they're in numbered order so here we go i'm thinking okay can you pull them down a bit yes. so we can see the pink one on the left? Boom, boom, boom. How's that? That's good. Okay, so okay. light pink, purple one, purple two, yellowy blue three, and the Valentine's Day four. So that's that's what I'm gonna, uh, let's, let's just quickly vote. So you guys pick which one you want me to turn today's uh, scrubby into. I am only going to be using a single strand of yarn. So I saw, was it Amanda? Amanda had the question, do we hold scrubby yarn and cotton yarns together? If you are, if you like to make scrubbies, um, if you've got 100% scrubby yarn that doesn't alternate, this is that yarn that alternates between scrubby and regular yarn. Um, so I only used a single strand of this. But if you want to use that 100% scrubby stuff and you want to see your stitches, so you want to pair it up, with a regular cotton. I've heard some people like to do that. I myself have not done that yet with any project. Um, but if you want to give it a try, you're going to need a bigger hook. And if you do do it, I would love to see how it works out or at least hear how it works out. I'm only going to use a single strand. So this is a single strand project. You don't need anything fancy, but I wanted to show you what it looks like um, with a bit of that scrubby yarn, just because I know um, I've already made one. Mr. Loves it. This one's for me. It's uh, this is cotton scrubby, so it's not like I've already used it, so abrasive. I don't think anyone wants to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could show it to you in full HD, but <laughs> um, Crocus was asking the color. So basically, the one you see on camera now, just uh, swap the green for blues. Yeah, That's yeah. The one I made, like. Mister, is um, all kind of in shades of blue and white, and yeah. this one is all in. in but green it's and the white. same yarn. It has that sort of mild grubbiness to it yeah it alternates um so i figure i would use the regular cotton yarn just one strand as janice says um it's it's better to see the stitches on camera with so i'm not going to use the scrubby that's why i wanted to show you what the scrubby finished looks like because uh you can't see the stitches so if you're going to uh, make one of these for the first time and you're still getting used to crocheting i don't recommend using scrubby yarn right off the bat but having said that you really can't screw this up. So don't worry about making mistakes because A, they won't show, B, they don't matter. Um, so one, two, three, and four, Mr. Stitches has a poll going. We'll wait till we have at least 100 views or 100 likes on the, or 100 votes. <laughs> yes, please like, please tap the like button. <laughs> and then uh, I'll grab one and we'll start. Like I said, um, if you if you arrive late or if you see somebody arriving late, please let them know that pattern information is in the uh, description box, including like the hook size and stuff like that and the yarn that we're using um, so they can catch up because this is a very fast project. I made this one in 25 minutes just before the stream. And I think without using scrubby yarn, I'd probably be able to go faster. I'm not going to speed crochet today. I want you guys to see what I'm up to. But uh, boy, once you get the handle of this, it's, it's super easy. So up top is the poll. Um, this is number one, two, three, and four. You can vote for whichever color you'd like to see me make today's scrubby out of. Honestly, can I like them all. Can we see a slight close up of uh, the, <coughs> the smaller ones? Can you pull them up towards the camera a bit? So that's number one. This is number one. This is kind of a sort of a purpley blue, which is kind of nice. So pinky, purpley yeah. blue. And then number two. Number two is a darker purple with some nice like turquoise and aqua in it. Very nice. Number three is yellow and blue and white. This is very fresh. I kind of like it. Makes me think of the calendar blanket colors I've done doing. Uh, I've chosen for this year. So that's kind of fun. That's like a denim blue, which is nice. Very fresh. 
And of course this one. This is that one. I used a bit of this at Christmas because uh, red, pink, and white looks kind of like candy cane-esque, but this also looks kind of Valentine's-y to me. So um, <laughs> whichever one you guys like the most is the one I will use. We have so far 151 votes. That's perfect. And we have 153 likes. So a big, big thank you to everyone for thank clicking you. the like button. We appreciate it. Marvelous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, these are great. These make great gifts. I see a few of you are mentioning that you made them for Christmas. Uh, recommend them. They are great gifts. They don't take long to make. Like I said, you can even tie a bunch of scraps together and make a really cute poof. So it's a nice little add-on. It's a nice little, like, you know, part of a gift. Um, and uh, if you are looking to, if you've got like a, you know, like a church bazaar or something coming up, consider adding a bunch of these to the table because uh, they'll sell. You know, people like a, a, a cotton scrub. It's better than plastic. And that's what a lot of those poofs are made out of. So, uh, all right, Mr. and Stitches, you can, you can finish the poll. Number two, this is number two, wins with 32%, one in second place, fourth in third place, third in 17th place. So we are going with color option number two, which is the purple and the aquas. All righty. Let's put these off to the side. Put my scissors over there. Actually, I'm going to keep this handy. Okay, so here's our poof. And let me find the middle of this. Nothing like getting into a new ball of yarn. All right, come on. Oh, I found my finger. That's good. <laughs> This is also a really good gift for, cause we're always getting asked, what should I, you know, what should I do for my son or my husband or like the guys in the family? This is a good little gift. Pair it up with a, a little bar of soap. Absolutely. And uh, it's not a bad little gift for, for a guy. All right, this feels Even a little- Even guys like to pamper themselves, you know? Yeah, guys like to pamper ladies. themselves. I have to say, this yarn, um, the one I've just unwound, is a, it's a four technically, but it looks more like a three. Um, so it's a little thinner than the yarn I was using before, and it's a little thinner than this one. Not that that's a big deal. I'm just sort of saying this might turn out to be a little bit smaller than this one. Again, doesn't matter. Scrubby's a scrubby. If you can get this into your hand, that's all that really matters. Uh, okay, here we go. We are going to start with our cotton yarn, make a slip knot, chain six to make a ring. There's my six. I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first chain. There's my ring. It fits over top of my finger pretty well. Now, the first thing we want to do is make our little hanger. So here we go. We're going to chain 40. All right, there's 40 chains. Uh, don't worry about it twisting or not, doesn't matter. Again, like I said, it's really difficult to mess up this, this project because <laughs> it just doesn't matter. You're gonna slip stitch back into your ring and that just secures your little hanger. So that's where you can put that over your wrist or you can hang it up in the shower or the bath to let it dry. We're gonna chain one and we're gonna use a half double crochet stitch for row one. So let's work 20 half double crochet stitches. You can use singles if you want, if you'd prefer that, but half double crochet stitches, they're a little on the tall side, they're kind of a little stronger. 20 half double crochet stitches into the ring. Ooh, that's pretty. Gee, I like that dark aqua. Hmm. Nice purple. There's the bell. Hey, 
Linksa! Linksa Dragon. That's a cool name. Welcome to Alpaca! Thank you for joining the family. So I think that's 10. Let me just count. Yep, that's 10. 10 more. 20 half double crochets into the ring to start. If you're one shy, if you're two shy, if you're three or four shy, who cares? This is not <laughs> an exacting project. Stitch count doesn't matter. It's just a guideline. I think I need about five more. As you're kind of filling things up inside your ring, hold on to your ring and pull back on your stitches and that will give you a little more space. All right, so there's 20 more or less. So you've got your hanger, You've got 20 half double crochets. I'm just going to get my yarn on the right side of my hanger. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet we made. And that completes row one. So row one is done. You've got a hanger that fits over your hand. And you've got the first row of your poof done. And now we just double crochet. We double crochet like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Chain three to begin, or you could do the standing double crochet. A lot of people have been asking about that lately. This is definitely one of those projects where it doesn't matter if you start the row with a chain three or a standing double crochet. Work three more double crochets into the same stitch. So this is when you pull up, you should be able to sort of see it opening there. Three double crochet into the same stitch. Oh my goodness, Robin! Thank you, Robin. Robin has just gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Robin. And Deborah won it. Congratulations, Deborah. Welcome back to the family. Thank you so much, you guys. All right, that's a chain three and three double crochet worked into the first stitch. That's the same stitch that the chain three came out of. Now you're going to work four double crochet in every single stitch all the way around. Four double crochet in every single stitch. So here's what I like to do. I'm going to take that out. At first it's really easy, nothing really kind of jams up and gets in your way. So I look for the next stitch and I work my first double crochet into it and then I kind of like keep my thumb and forefinger there. So not only am I holding my work, but I've got my thumb right where I need to be putting my hook in. This is especially helpful if you're going to use some of that scrubby yarn and it becomes difficult to see your stitches. This way you, I know if I'm, if I'm pushing my hook down and I'm tapping my thumb, that's exactly where it needs to go. So I put my thumb right where I'm supposed to put my hook so I know where to put those four double crochet stitches. And again, stitch count doesn't matter. This is just to help, but it's nice practice. Hi, Dizzy. Thank you, Dizzy D. Dizzy has also just gifted a membership. <laughs> Congratulations, Diana. Diana has what? Welcome back to the family. Thank you so much, you guys. After you've finished your four double crochet, you find the next stitch and work four double crochet into it. And I just sort of slowly keep moving my thumb and forefinger around. I put my thumb there. So then I know that's where I need to put all four of those stitches. And it's not really going to start rippling or fanning out on you for a few more stitches. Like you'll, you'll probably notice that it's, it doesn't, it wouldn't want to lie flat terribly quickly. So I'm going to move to the next one. But it's, you're going to be about 10 stitches in here around row one before, or 40 double crochet into row two before you really start to notice it wanting to ripple on you. Um, but you can just kind of keep pushing it back, pushing it back. It'll start to ripple just to kind of A, keep those stitches out of your way so you can see what you're doing and uh, encourage the rippling. If you feel like it's just a little too loose. Maybe your yarn like this one is kind of on the thin side. Go ahead and stick in an extra double crochet sometimes. Maybe instead of doing four, you do five. I just did five, why not? Find the next stitch. Maybe you're using a yarn that's really, really thick or your hook's small and you feel like it is such a, 
a, a struggle to get four double crochet into that stitch and it's already really ruffling like crazy on you so just do three every couple of stitches do three double crochet instead of four or do three and then five and then three and then five it is entirely up to you this is a hard to mess up pattern so just practice cramming have, double uh, crochets in we have a really solid question from mr graybeard yes how bad can how big can you make these i'm the size of a mac truck <laughs> so i have a lot of yardage to clean <laughs> i love that got a real man in the house okay um this one fits in my hand mr and stitches said you said once you started using it you yeah the first one you made me i really like it but it was a bit too small because when you're trying to wash and scrub it it kind of like flings out of your hand so um i think the bigger the better for man hands agreed okay so in that case you have a couple of options one cram more stitches into each row so maybe do four double crochet five double crochet four double crochet five double crochet it'll really ripple out on you or do four double crochet in every stitch all the way around do the same thing when we get to row three and then add a row four it'll just be much much bigger there is no end to this pattern you can keep going you can start with more stitches you can add more double crochet into each stitch basically what you're doing is creating one of those little like c coral kind of effects it almost looks a bit like a brain you're just cramming as many stitches in as you can and if you feel like this that fits in your hand isn't big enough do an extra row um, at row one you'll have 20 stitches at the end of row two you'll have 80 stitches at the end of row three you'll have 320 stitches and I guess if you keep going if you put four double crochet in every single stitch of row three you'll have whatever four times 320 is so um, maybe 70 something, seven, 7,000 something rather stitches. Doesn't matter. Like I said, stitch count doesn't matter. What you want to do though is cram stitches in. If you feel you want another whole row, go for it. You might be crocheting a while, but it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Monica! Hey Monica! Monica has been a member for 16 months. Monica with a membership milestone. Thank you, Monica. Monica says, since I am still limited in my crochet because of my elbow, ooh, this is the perfect small project for me. It is a good small project, but remember, I will stress this again, keep everything loose. Don't, it's, it, there's a real uh, temptation to tighten up and speed up in a project like this because it's just double crochets. But if you suffer from any kind of aches, if you're healing from something, if you've got some kind of, you know, like reoccurring issue of any kind, <laughs> just remember that you aren't in a race. <laughs> I have to tell myself that. And just relax, just relax, take it easy. If you feel yourself tightening up or if you feel like some tension or pain or something, put it down, come back to it. it it's not one of those projects where you have to remember where you are. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You just kind of go, oh yeah, it looks like I crammed four into that stitch. I'll just keep, I'll just pick it up and keep going. Also a good point, uh, Wraith brings up a good point. These do actually take a while to dry because they're 100% cotton. Yes. So if you're you want once you use it you definitely want to wring it out as much as possible and you want to hang it yes um, the, if you hang it it it's okay it dries relatively quick yes um and remember you don't just have to hang it over the faucet or hang it from the top of the the thing you can also hang it over your sham shampoo bottle just hook it there and let it dry um but yes good point um oh i should just say if you are thinking about using your stitch marker you can attach it to the first stitch of the row I would say it's still pretty easy to tell where the first stitch of row two is it's row three where things start to get really kind of thick like a jungle um, so I'm probably not going to bother using my stitch marker until row three but you can always <clears throat> put your stitch marker on the first stitch of the row if you find that maybe things are kind of uh, rippling up on you faster that's great and you don't want to lose track of where the beginning of the row is. Not that it matters. Not that it matters. You could completely work over top of it, not even realizing it, and it won't matter. <laughs> hey, Pamela. Pamela's been a member for five months. Thank you so much, Pamela. Pamela, with a membership milestone, says, getting stitches out this afternoon. Ooh, 11 days thumb surgery. 
post-op, a, <laughs> I can't read that, hang on, a bath poof has been great since one arm is in a plastic bag to shower. Oh my goodness, is everybody, everybody's suffering a little bit right now. Well, I'm glad you're getting your stitches out. That's awesome. That means you're healing. 11 days thumb surgery post-op. Ooh, 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 I hope you get your mobility and your strength back nice and fast. If they tell you to do exercises, you make sure you do them. Uh, I know it's tempting to be like, man, I don't feel like it, but boy, howdy, it, the older we get, the more we got to do those exercises. Uh, and Judith, thank you, Judith, for picking up a pattern. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you know what? If you are slowly recovering from something, this is a good little project to work on. Not only can you use it right away, a little bit of self-love, but um, it's not complicated. Your tension doesn't matter. Your stitch count doesn't matter. Where you put your stitches doesn't matter. If you wind up getting in between the stitches instead of getting the top of the stitches, who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is a stitch cramming project. I think I've been working five into some. I don't care. This doesn't matter. Um, the We've got notes in the description box. So if you arrive late or you want to come back, that information's there for you too. And if you're a Silk or Vicuña member, we have a nice written pattern for this available on the members page. Um, so that is there if you are interested. But um, yeah, this is a great scrap project. This is a great beginner project. If you know somebody who is learning how to crochet, you know how, and sit down and make a bath poof together because anything they do is correct. We're having some internet issues. Oh, okay. Looks like are we back? Uh, great. All right. Um, good timing. I've just finished row two. I'm going to have a sip of my water here. Dizzy! Hey, Dizzy! Dizzy's back with a membership milestone. Dizzy D has been a member for 13 months. And Dizzy says, I'd like to take micro breaks while crocheting. It does make a difference. Oh, it does. It absolutely does. You'll see me put stuff down, take a sip of my coffee, take a sip of my tea. Sometimes I'll, I'll pause and I'll chat and maybe like rub my hands or stretch my fingers. <clears throat> Excuse me. It does make a difference um, because all those little muscles that are constantly working and contracting and working and contracting, they, you know, they get tired. So give them a break. These are great gifts. Highly recommend. I'm, this is very pretty. I, I'm liking this. Um, this did you explain, Maria would like to know if the one, the Etsy shop one is different from the members one. The Etsy shop one is uh, very similar to the one for the members. It just has an extra size included in it. Um, so it's, it's uh, the members, the members pattern is the one we're doing today. And the, the pattern available in the shop includes the one we're doing today. And it also includes instructions for a, a slightly larger one. So if, uh, you know, you're, if you find you want to make it a little thicker or a little heavier, and I'm also saying today you can add more rows. <clears throat> the pattern is a, a kind of like, um, it's one of one, something I would more refer to as a crochet guide. Like it's a, it's a pattern. And if you make it, you'll get this. But there, it's, it's that reminder of how many should I start with? Oh, yeah. And then just go nuts. Poof patterns have no real rules to them. Um, they're a stitch cramming project. So uh, um, if you'd like to pick up a, a pattern, it's a single page, it's um, it's in our bargain shop. So our bargain, the bargain section of our shop. So it's, a, it's just a couple bucks. It's in and the it's bargain a, bin. It's in the bargain bin. It's, it's a nice way to help support the, the channel. And it's a single page and it's got the two different sizes on it. Um, so if you, you know, want to make a few up, um, it saves you kind of like, having to remember the pattern or come back here and watch the show. Uh, but like I said, the members pattern is uh, also available on the members page for the Silk and Vicuña, and there are notes on today's project in the description box. So if you're popping in a little late, you'll find that information down there. Melissa says, scrap projects take less than 10 yards. This is my soapbox. <laughs> less than 10 yards. Well, what do you do if you have like a whole bunch of 10 yards? Is that still a scrap project or is that not a scrap project anymore. <laughs> um, I am just finishing row two here. So uh, once you finish working four, five, three, however many stitches you cram into that last stitch and you come back up to the chain three that began the row, you just join with a slip stitch. And <clears throat> technically, if you did exactly as the pattern calls for, you'll have 120 stitches. Uh, I should say you'll have 80 stitches at the end of row two. 
but the stitch count doesn't really matter. It's just a guide. More importantly, you should have something that's starting to really spin on you like this. As you add rows, like this is at the end of row three, and if you wanted to make it bigger, it would be even bigger. So more like a cabbage. Um, and that is the end of row two. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's the ding ding. Hi, Donna. Donna's stitch it in stitch in time crochet. Welcome to Alpaca. Thank you for joining the family. Melissa says that's a scrap combing project. I just like to make little things. <laughs> I I think is a, a scrap project to me is is anything that I can use up what's left in a ball of yarn. Hi Monica, thank you for picking up a pattern at our shop. Um, I I think a scrap project is whatever, if I'm making something from the leftovers of a ball of yarn, no matter how much is left over, then to me, that's a scrap project because I didn't buy the yarn specifically for that project, but I have enough of that left that I can make a whole project with it. So I think, I think that's probably how I would define scrap. But yes, a scrap, very, very small amount of yarn. I have to agree that that, that qualifies as a scrap. <laughs> All right, here we go, row three, same as row two, chain three to begin, or you can use a standing double crochet. In fact, if you're interested in what that looks like, I'll show you. Standing double crochet, you pull up a tall loop, try to keep um, some tension on the yarn so it doesn't get out of control, and then you wanna wrap it around your hook. So I find I have to twist it before I, I wrap it. And then you kind of like double crochet with it. Um, there are a lot of ways you can do this. It's a nice way to practice that. Um, you can sort of stand up again, hold it taunt, wrap your, wrap, hold it and wrap your, your hook around it. Maybe keep your thumb on it and then yarn over and pull back or try to pull back through those loops. I don't like doing the standing. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, I find I, I struggle. That might be because of the, the, the problems I have with grip in my hand, but I struggle to do the standing double crochet from that loop. Um, I know a lot of you like to do it though, and this is one of those projects where you can absolutely chain three, do a standing double crochet, you can change colors every row, it absolutely doesn't matter. Uh, you just wanna get up to that uh, top, of the, get up to the height of a double crochet. So chain three, standing double crochet, whatever you want, and three more double crochets all into the same place. And it's the same thing, it's four double crochet in every single stitch all the way around, but uh, you know, if you add a few more in, if you miss a few, if you add too many, doesn't matter. You are going for that crazy rippling effect. Um, this is the give, your, give yourself permission to just whatever. Turn your brain off, don't count, uh, play yarn chicken. <laughs> this is one of those projects. Hello, Katie. Katie has been a member for 39 months. Thank you, Katie. Katie says, hi, I'm on my way home to stash bust my cotton. Well, perfect. <laughs> Glad you're here. So you want to do, try to do at least four double crochet in each stitch. Um, but like I said, if you miss one or if you do too many, that's perfectly fine because all you're doing is trying to get this waving kind of thing going. Now you'll notice it's harder to see where the first stitch of the row is. So if you care, <laughs> because it doesn't really matter, you can mark out the first chain three that began the row with your stitch marker or your clip and uh, you'll know where you are when you get back around to it. I find that knowing where the beginning of the row is in a project like this actually has a sort of a, a positive psychological effect. So as you're kind of working around, working around, if you can actually see where the start of the row is, um, it kind of helps you get motivated to get to the end of the row because by the time you're, you're halfway through row three, you're, you've gone from 80 stitches to 320. That's a, that's a four, it's literally a, a, a quantum four times multiple of stitches. So you're really adding in a lot more stitches. It can start to feel kind of onerous. So if you can actually see where the beginning of the row is and you can kind of see it coming around and getting closer, I feel that kind of motivates me to, to finish. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Jennifer's asking what the weather is like in Canada. Well, where we are, it is, hmm, I'm going to say cold is a good description and snowy and blowy. It's been actually pretty breezy. We were kind of worrying that we might actually lose power today. So, so far, so good. Are we talking about men's sense? Yes, um, we are talking about old colognes. Okay, I know this or isn't I old. Say older. Colognes. I know this isn't old, but did anybody else get the John Bon Jovi scent from um, uh, Avon back in the day? The, either the one for women or the one for men, because it is amazing. It is one of my favorite scents. I'm uh, I'm be I'm being thrown back into the '90s here, reading the uh, comments. Drakkar, <laughs> I remember that one. Drakkar, I don't know. That. Oh, I know Brute. Stetson. Stetson. Oh my gosh. Yep. <laughs> Drakkar Noir. I think it was called Drakkar Noir. I'm sure these are still out there. I've never heard of Drakkar. Um, colognes and perfumes—they don't really disappear Not that often. Not usually. Drakkar sounds like the name of a, of a Star Trek alien. <laughs> Drakkar sounds like a Star Trek character. CK1, yep. That was a 90s. Uh, that was big in the 90s. <laughs> Jupe. Does anyone remember Jupe? J O O P. Um. Oh boy, I'm trying to remember. I can I can picture the bottles. I can can't remember all the names. There was one there was one called something water. It was in like a turquoise bottle. Water? Oh uh, yeah. Is that the aqua velvet or whatever? Trying to Did remember. somebody just I'm mention? I'm trying to remember the names. <laughs> I think it was called Unplugged. Cool Water. That's it. Destiny remembers. Cool Water. Cool Water. <laughs> I, I think the one I'm one. thinking of, the, the Bon Jovi scent from Avon was called Unplugged, I think. Yes, Unplugged. Yeah, that I was love pretty it. good. Uh, Armani had one. I forget what that one's called. <laughs> uh, I also just want to mention that um, if you're making one of these, and like I said, if you're using a yarn that's a little bit thinner, like I, this is a size four yarn. Pamela, thank you. Thank you so much for picking up some patterns. Um, if you're using a thinner yarn than uh, the, say the regular size four, then sticking in extra stitches, like five every couple of, of stitches instead of just four, will help beef it up. And you don't have to really, you know, worry about your hook size or the thinness of the yarn having sort of an overall impact. Just add in, add in more stitches. Um, this is one of those projects where you can kind of vary it up as you go. Liz says, I go, I go way back to English leather. Ooh. I remember English leather. Let's see who goes back the furthest. So far, English leather is, uh, is the oldest I can remember on the list. Are these all kind of like aftershaves? Brute, Brute is probably pretty old, and so is the... Um, Oh, what's that famous one? Someone mentioned it. Stetson? Old Spice. Oh, Old Spice. That, that one goes back. Yeah, that's an old one. That one's nice smell, too. <laughs> Gee, you know, that's an idea. If you were going to buy someone their favorite, you know, um, aftershave or, or perfume or whatever, 
uh, making one of these to match the colors of the, the bottle would be such a cute little uh, add-on to the gift. That's a good idea. And matching soap. Like, Brute was green, right? Yes, Brute was green. Wow, okay. And it had that. like, um, the original bottles were glass and they had like a little metal chain. Yeah. Kind of like a little tag on them. Yeah. So that would be nice. You know, a bar of soap and a, a nice bottle of aftershave or, or you know. Aqua Velva. Yep, that's going back. Irish Moose. I've never heard of Irish Moose. I remember Irish Spring, the soap. <laughs> 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 Everyone's really liking your poof there. I, I was thinking, um, this might, this is kind of outside of the box, but this would also make a really cute um, keychain. <laughs> it would. You because know what? Because it's, if... it's puffy and you could grab your keys and you'd, you know, if you threw it in your pocket, it would kind of soften the keys. Yeah, it you. would. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for picking up a pattern. It would absolutely make a cute little, especially if you made it with a small hook and like... Yeah, like you could make it just a little yarn. bit smaller and it would make a cute keychain for sure. Yeah, sock weight yarn. Um, I'm just thinking... Because they're fun to squeeze. They are. Before you use them. They After are. After you they're... use them, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> and a cat toy, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Very good cat toy if you make it a little smaller, I guess. Yeah, in order to make it smaller, I would start with um, fewer, fewer stitches in row one, maybe like 10. And then, so smaller hook, lighter weight yarn start with maybe 10 to 15 stitches in row one and then maybe do half double crochets instead of double crochets cramming them in still four to four to a stitch and that would shrink it i think that would that would make it quite a nice little cat toy or a keychain i kind of like that idea of it being a keychain that's cute that's a freebie i'll let you have that one <laughs> For row three, I'm just sort of, now I feel like my brain is kind of just settled into that nice little like, ah oh yes, double crochet, double crochet. And I and I have to kind of occasionally like dial in and go, did I put four in there? Or like, and I've already done four before I've known it. So um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm still crocheting rather quickly. Not as, not as quick as I was going to, like, or as I could, because um, I don't want to, you know, I don't feel the need to rush. But um, this nice smooth cotton is really easy to crochet with. It's a lot easier to crochet with than the scrubby or the scrubbit uh, cottons uh, because they don't flow as nicely through your fingers, but they do feel nice as an actual like scrubbing cloth of sorts. So I don't know. Um, I would make one if you're new to crochet or you've never made a poof before. I would make one with just nice regular, you know, washcloth cotton first, like I'm doing here. And then maybe, you know, try one with the with the funnier yarn or the scrubby yarn, or maybe try holding two strands together to make something really thick and poofy. They do get pretty heavy. So if you if you want to make a bigger um, poof, I would just do like an extra row of the double crochet as opposed to doing the two strands held together because it'll get pretty pretty heavy. I find partway through row three, yeah, I can start to really feel the weight of this. So so wet, it will be even heavier. So it's something to kind of keep in mind. Um, but this, this is pretty nice cotton. It's on the thinner side and uh, it's not heavy at all. So that's, that's kind of nice. This is that stripey stuff. I don't know if it's been discontinued completely yet, but I'm sure there's still some to be found around. Uh, yes, LaShonda, Pe peaches and cream cotton uh, would absolutely work for this project. It's that um, that kind of dishclothy stuff. Anything that you would make a dishcloth out of, for like cotton-wise, would be absolutely perfect for this. 
also uh, feel it. You know, if you're out and about and you see some cotton yarn, pick it up, feel it, run it through your hands, maybe literally touch your, your you know, the, the, the sort of the, the softer side of your, your wrist um, because it, that'll tell you whether or not it'll make a nice scrubby. It does look like a brain. <laughs> It also looks like all those pretty sea corals. four double crochet or five or three or combinations of all of them or just try to stick to four to each stitch. I I, uh, I think I'm doing mostly just four double crochet but I am sticking the extra one in every once in a while just because why not? I do like the uh, I, I do like how much it's it's sort of like curving in on itself. way these feel. I know Mr. and Stitches was making some jokes about them being, you know, feeling funny when they're wet, but I, I like I like the feeling of something substantial. I I don't like um some of those poofs that you can get at the store that are like, you know, the the plasticky tool stuff. They're lightweight, which is nice, and they they fluff up with the suds really really well, but I feel like I have a hard time gripping them and keeping them in my hand. <laughs> I feel like they want to come apart. Um, I find like the, the a really nice uh, scrub the poof will often just come apart on me. I don't know. It's like it's like I know it's it's pieces of tool that are all just kind of like I think they're just sort of mine. Uh, mine always come apart on me. Yeah. They and then they look like a big scarf. Yeah, and then they look like a giant <laughs> and you're scarf. Like, what is this? And then you're sitting there in the shower trying to put it back together. Yeah, and it's, it's I don't know. I prefer something that I feel like I can really manhandle. I can really be rough with it. I can I can grip it and it's not going to sort of like, my like I, I it's, it's not going to come apart in my hands. I can really <laughs> scrub with it. Yeah. So these are a winner in my books. Someone was asking what row you're on. How many rows are you doing? This is row three. This is the final row. I am only doing three rows. Uh, because obviously by the time you get to, you know, you're, you're doing four double crochet in every stitch all the way around. By the time you get to, um, your <clears throat> third row, you're, you're working on upwards of 320 stitches. So that's a lot of stitches. Um, maybe even more if you're sticking in the ad, the odd extra one. So you only need to do three rows of this, but you can keep going. So if you wanted it to, to be even bigger, you could do another row and you don't have to do four double crochet in every single row of a fourth row. If you're just going for a bit more size and bulk, you could maybe do two double crochet in every stitch or three double crochet in every stitch or alternate. Um, this is going to depend largely on the yarn you wind up with, the hook you're using. So there's a lot of room for play in this pattern. You wanna use the pattern as a guide and then just vary it as you go, depending on what you feel it needs. There's the bell, hi Jojo. Jojo's been a member for nine months. Jojo with a membership milestone says, love this poof. I made similar fidgets that rolled through itself for kids with ADHD. It helps them to concentrate in school. Huh, fidgets that kind of, I guess, just sort of roll together. I'm assuming that's what you mean. That's nifty. There are so many neat things we can make with crochet. Oh, that's another thing. Yes, Dawn makes a point. The plastic poofs, you can't put them in the washing machine or the dryer really because they kind of either fall apart 
uh, they're plastic, so you can't put them in anything hot because they'll kind of melt, which is gross. Um, but these are cotton, so you can throw them in the washing machine. You know, you can throw them in the dryer. You can be really rough with them. They might shrink a little bit, but that's okay. It's not going to change the structural integrity of the poof. <laughs> They can, they can take a lot of abuse, those ones there. Mm -hmm. The more stitches you cram in, the better. And the more stitches you cram in, the more wiggly and squiggly it gets. And so as you're nearing the end of row three, um, sometimes you have to start kind of like moving moving your previous stitches around and make sure that you're, you're still working, you know, comfortably into the next stitch. You're not, it's not like getting difficult to hold. <laughs> Krista got free mole removal. Free... Hmm? <laughs> oh, free mole removal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tall. T -t Tool. I think that's the name of the stuff. Tool, that's it. Um, yeah, it it's it's like plastic and it unravels. Plasticky. So uh, the, the usual poofs are made out of that stuff, but, you know, anything made in a factory doesn't hold up very well necessarily. So... Uh, crocheting with it would be different than just having it all kind of what they do with it is they just sort of layer bits together and then they tie a knot around it yes and that's the poof and yeah, that's, that's just going to come do. apart it's so a big long rectangle yeah crocheting with it is a completely different different scenario so that would be cool but again you don't don't put them in the dryer if it's plastic you want to I wonder if um, if you were trying to get a bit of a blend between absorption, but also allowing it to sort of dry quickly. I wonder if blending the cotton with something else would help, like a different type of yarn. Well, the scrub off, uh, which I think is 100% polyester, which I think I think is the Red Heart version scrape yourself within an inch you of like tearing off I thought your you had to skin. scrape your skin off isn't that how, how you're supposed to do it no <laughs> um, it looks like we're we're um buffering out again Are so we? just give it a minute everyone it'll come back it's funny how it does that every so often it shouldn't we're back well, not much has changed since before the buffering. We're still making a shower puff. Still shower poof. Still four <laughs> double crochet per stitch. Still looks like a sea anemone. <laughs> it's still a shower poof. Makes a great gift. Makes a great Actually, self gift. We, we did not feed the squirrels today because it's kind of crappy out there. Yeah, the weather's kind of... They're, they're tucked away in their little houses. Uh, but we do have a little... We made a little homemade... Um, what would you call that thing? Well, it was like a seed bell. It's like a seed bell, but we made a homemade, homemade version. So the little chickadees are out there feeding. Maybe the squirrels are, are trying to hack into our live stream from their houses. Possibly. I mean, if they're stuck in their homes, they're bored. Yeah, they, they have all the time in the world today to, <laughs> to hack in and make a mess. <laughs> It could very much be the weather, Joyce. Uh, the weather is very windy and blustery. It's the weather. It's the weather. It's it's been windy and gusty uh, today. We were concerned that we would lose power altogether. Uh, hello, hello! If you're just joining us, we're making a bath poof. The pattern notes are in the description box, and um, if you want to try and catch up, you can you can do that. Uh, just tell yourself there's no rules. Grab some cotton and a hook and go mental. <laughs> Today's project has zero rules. It is just a guideline. <laughs> There's only one rule today, and that's that you tap on that like button. Yes. Because we're doing a little experiment today. We're doing we're an experiment. We're trying to see how many likes we can get. Because we think the likes... And how much it affects our live stream. Yes, in, in real, real time. time. I am nearing the so end of this row. we're doing great today. We have 307 people watching hello, and 274 hello. likes everybody hello that's pretty, that's pretty close welcome and thank you and we uh big hello to everybody who's lurking as well i know some of you are lurking yes calling on all lurkers hello lurkers. you don't have to say hello just just come and tap the like button and then you can go back to the to the closet or around the corner wherever you're hiding <laughs> on the couch we promise we won't attack or bite yes 
Hi, Bippy. Welcome to Alpaca. Thanks for joining the family. Bippy Sim is four. All right, that is the last stitch. See, I've come up against my stitch marker. That was handy because it was uh, getting difficult to see. Four double crochet in the last stitch. I'm joining with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. There we go. And that's it. That's all I need to do for that G. I really like that one. That one is really cute. Ooh, let's get a real good close up look at those. So that's the one Very made nice. with the scrub off. It's that partly regular cotton, partly scrubby cotton. It kind of turns, goes from one to the other. And that's the exact same pattern. Um, it has a nice feel. It's kind of on the heavy side. And this is that stripy cotton. It's a little bit thinner, still a size four apparently, but I would have called that a size three. Um, I stuck in five double crochet here and there just because, and um, it, it feels lighter than this one. I really like the colors in that one. Let's give this a little trim. Fastening off, nice tight knot, and now I'm gonna weave my tail in underneath some of those stitches, back and forth and back and forth, because I don't want it to undo. Penelope would like to see how much is left of the yarn after you made that. So I started pulling from the inside. So there's the inside uh, showing. I could definitely get a second one out of this. There's more on the outside, obviously, than there is in the middle. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit there. Well, I would like to congratulate all of our wonderful viewers because for the first time ever, we have more likes than viewers. Oh my gosh. This is definitely a record. <laughs> hey Maria, thank you. Thank you for picking up a pattern. We have more likes than viewers. That's, yes, that's curious. Yes, we have more likes than concurrent viewers today. That's a first. Hi Connie, thank you so much for gifting a membership. Connie has just gifted a membership and... Who has won it? Sandy! Sandy has won it! Welcome back to the family, Sandy. And, hi Summer! Summer has been a member for 57 months. Wow! Thank you, Summer. Summer with a membership milestone. I'm working on a mosaic crochet pattern with six colors because I clearly hate myself. <laughs> Woo! Complicated! <laughs> also, I need to send you the pictures I took of Anubis in the museum gar garage from this weekend. Oh my gosh, that sounds so cool! Yes, please! Catherine's asking, what gram weight is that yarn? Um, this is a size four, but I would say it's more on the size three style. There's about, give yourself maybe 55 to 60 yards of it per poof. Hi, Francis. Thank you for picking up a pattern. Um, in terms of grams, mm, this is an 85 gram cake. 85 gram cake, this little thing. Um, and I've used... I've used less than half of it because I started pulling from the center. Um, so I'll definitely be able to get two out of that little cake for sure. Gee, that's awfully cute. I like that. Um, so that one came out a little bit smaller because of the weight of the this, it being a slightly, that they're both size four category, but this one is definitely a thicker size four, not to mention that scrubby yarn makes it beefier. Um, so it's a bit bigger than this one, but I think I like the way this one looks. This one looks more like a flowery cabbage. Welcome, welcome. Uh, the ball weight. Yeah, did that help, Catherine? I think I, I think I covered that. I really like I really like this color. That purple or that, that that deep teal is really really nice i like that purple teal slightly lightly aqua hi renee renee's been a member for 22 months renee with a membership milestone renee says hi from pesacola florida well hello i bet you you're enjoying nicer weather than we are today <laughs> all right does anybody have any questions or additional questions about making a poof um uh, 
Pattern notes are in the description box. If you're a Silver Vicuña member, there's a written pattern for this uh, available on the member's website. And if you're new to Silver Vicuña membership, we'll be posting login information again in the community tab after today's live stream. And we have a written pattern for this and a slightly different size. So there's two different size options. But like I say, this kind of pattern is like guide only. You cannot mess this up. You can make as many changes to this as you need to, depending on your yarn, your tension, your hook, whatever. Um, so you can just go crazy with this pattern. And there is one available in the bargain section of our shop too, if you want to help support the show. And thank you. Hello, Lynette. Thank you so much for the super chat. Lynette charging in with a bright yellow <laughs> super thanks. Thank you so much. And Maribel, hello Maribel, welcome to Silk. Thank you for the upgrade. Oh, here's the <laughs> stitches <laughs> with the ship. I love it. Um, yeah, so let me just see if there's questions. Is cotton yarn or something else? It's cotton yarn L. I used 100% cotton, um, but you could use a scrubby yarn that's maybe polyester or blend a couple together if you wanted. But I, I would stick to a single strand for this project. Um... Hi everyone, Lynx, I've been trying to chat. Oh, she had devices synced. Hi Lynx, did we see you? <laughs> I like these more than the store-bought plastic ones too, Donna. They aren't gonna come apart on you. You can throw them in the washing machine, you can throw them in the dryer, um, and you can be really rough with them. And to be perfectly honest, they feel nice in your hand. I really like the way that feels. Um, so that is, that feels good. I would like to do that. We have a membership upgrade from Mela. Hey Mela! Thank you so much. Upgraded. Woohoo. Thank you. Thank you, Mayla. Thank you. Make sure you go grab that free pattern. Yes. Don't worry. If you uh, if you can't uh, find the login information, we will be uploading that again after today's live stream. And hello, Peggy. Thank you for picking up a pattern. We appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, um, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Hi, Jada. Is there a way to alter the stitches so the petals look like hearts? Oh, that's cute. Um, I don't know if you would notice individual heart petal shapes after all of the squint, the scrunch, scrunching takes place. I'm just running, running that possibility through my brain. I think the idea here is to make it as densely packed with stitches as possible so that it creates a lot of f f fluff and suds. So if you were experimenting with shapes, um, that would basically be more for just sort of practice, but I don't think you would see them as much um, just because of the way this pattern is designed. Uh, hi, Katrina. <laughs> Your yarn friend, Griffith. <laughs> Member for my nine months. Thank you, Katrina. Katrina says, thanks for all your wonderful tutorials. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Regina's wondering what cotton I'm using. I use... The only cotton, uh, dishcloth cotton I usually have access to is Burnat Handicrafter. That's what all of this is. Um, this is Burnat, this is Burnat, this is Burnat. Um, but I mean, I am sure depending on where you are, there are other good cottons for dishcloths like the um, sugar and cream or peaches and cream or whatever those those you know, I think they're all kind of the same maker but is it better to have a, a quasi rough like raw cotton versus the mercerized yeah I wouldn't use mercerized cotton because mercerized cotton is the sleek kind of tightly wound almost shimmery cotton like the 24 7 and it's actually treated with um something to make it look like that and to be less pilly but in a case like this you don't need it to be you kind of want the cheapest you least you you want it to stuff. be soft and fluffy and you want it to almost want to pill a little bit yeah. because that's going to be helpful in the sun what, um, what about raw um animal furs like uh, wool and angora and um well wool llama, will, stuff like that wool will felt so you'll be you'll end up using a felted scrubby. I'm not sure how that would feel or look or act in suds and water, um, having never made one out of 100% sheep wool before. Uh, but I'm sure it's been done. And I guess it would just be the it would just matter if you had an allergy or a sensitivity to sheep's wool yes. or not. Uh, but that's why I like the cotton for this. Cotton is a 100% natural, and um, you know. It makes a nice soft little poof. <laughs> mm. 
it is a fun scrap project. Um, somebody suggested bamboo, says Penelope. Yep, I think bamboo, bamboo might actually not be a great choice only because it's so lovely and silky. I guess if you could get a rough, if they can you make can, a rough looking you bamboo. Could blend a, yeah, maybe blend a bamboo with a cotton or um, hemp. Hemp with a with hemp. A, hemp would be great. Hemp can be nice and soft, and it's hemp uh, would be good probably. Yeah, most people don't have allergies to hemp or cotton or bamboo because they're all kind of like grasses. But um, hey, if you do have a problem with grass, you know, think twice about hemp or bamboo. Um, yeah, peaches and cream. Yeah, that's it. Peaches and cream. Thanks, Sakura. All right. Well, if nobody has any other questions, um, I'm sure we can answer any questions that might pop up later. If you do have questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below. Feel free to come back and watch it on the replay. We've noticed that the live chat is available to watch on the replay usually an hour or two after the stream has ended the first time. It takes a while to like process, I guess, before it becomes available to watch. Um, but the notes in the um, section of the uh, description box, they're going to stay there. So if you need them for a quick reference, uh, feel free to pop back and, uh, and check the description box. And um, we'll post a few photographs of uh, the poofs with some other additional information in the community post uh, on the community tab later this afternoon. <laughs> We have um, a very yeah. important uh, chat from Catherine. Catherine says, thank you, Jada, for being Jada. <laughs> I would like to also thank you for being Jada. Aw, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, we will see you Friday. Friday is... Ooh, Friday is a big one. February. And it's the first Friday in February. So you all know what that means. It's Calendar Blanket Friday. So the next installment in Granny's Magical Cupboard Calendar Blanket will be available this Friday. So, um... Sometime Friday, we tr we aim for 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern on Fridays, but, you know, just because of the way uploading and, and uh, processing and stuff goes, it's not always 11 o'clock, but we will always post a note in the community tab if there's going to be some crazy delay or if we lost power or something like that. Um, so unless you see a note, um, you can look forward to our new calendar blanket, Granny Square, on Friday. And uh, we will share some more uh, of your photos this week too. They've been coming in. I think that's great. If you've got sh uh, photos of projects you've made with us here, uh, you can send them to us at the Etsy shop. Just pop into the Etsy shop, click on message seller, and you can click on um, inside that box. It'll either be like a little camera or like a little landscape picture. You just click on that and you can attach a photo. Hi Sue, Secure Sue, a member for 53 months. Thank you. Says, thank you for another wonderful project. You're both the best. Aw, thank you. <laughs> thank you guys for being here. Thank you for thumbing up the to the the, um, the live stream. It looks like it has, uh, I don't know if it's helped, if it's helped uh, a, um, a tremendous amount more in the middle of live streaming, but we'll see if it actually helps after the live stream too. Again, it's today's little, uh, little experiment with the YouTube software. In the meantime, have a fantastic week, everybody. Stay safe and crafty. We will see you Friday. Mr. and Stitches, have you anything you'd like to add? I think you covered it all today. All right. Well, Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Thanks for clicking that like button. Yeah. Um, we'll keep an eye on the results. Make yourself a poof and uh, get and clean. And take a shower. <laughs> for God's sakes, take a shower. <laughs> for the love of God, go take a shower. <laughs> all right, everybody. See you Friday. Bye. Bye.